This set of videos covers analysis and result requests specific to composites for an OptiStruct model, as well as post-processing OptiStruct data for composites. Uh, this video will start by applying thermal loads. Thermal loads aren't unique to composite modeling, but they come up all the time, so it's important to know how to set them up for OptiStruct. When we're applying a thermal load, ultimately we're after a delta, and we achieve this by setting an initial temperature. Uh, typically, this is the temperature at cure during manufacture. A load temperature, which may or may not be constant, we're showing the constant case, but there are options to uh, map spatially varying temperatures as well. And then we'll finish with assignments in this uh, first thermal load video. Coming into HyperMesh, I will begin with a file open model and use this hat ply base. This is the same model we built during the uh, introduction series. And I'll go ahead and start back up with it now. To apply our thermal loads, I will start by creating a load collector from the model browser. Give it a name. For a card image, we're going to use a temp D, and this will apply the same temperature to every node in our model. If we remember back to the introduction set of videos, we're in millimeters, newton seconds, so I'll apply 130 C. Similar setup for the load temp. I'm going to use just a constant temp, but the process would be very similar for uh, spatially varying. I would simply import or map uh, my spatially varying temperatures into a load collector rather than using a temp D. But in this case, I will create a second load collector. I'll give it a name, set the same card image, and I'll set my load temperature, something like 25C. And when I go to apply these, this will ultimately give me a delta between my cure temp and my load temp. There are two ways to apply thermal loads. I can do it on a subcase specific basis, or I can do it globally on all uh, subcases. Subcase specific first, I can come into my load step. We already have one load step, just a simple linear static subcase in this model. Uh, this end of the hat is constrained. This end has a bending load on it. And to apply thermal loads on a sub, uh, subcase specific basis, I can come down to my subcase options, activate the initial temp option and select my cure temp. And I'll do something similar for the load temp. I'll activate temp load and select my temp load. And now this would apply uh, my temperature delta only to this subcase. Any other subcases I had in the model would not receive this temperature delta. If I wanted to ensure that I got that temperature delta on all subcases, what I can do instead is apply them globally. I'll go ahead and just turn them off on this subcase. And I can apply globally with a right-click create cards. I'll use a case control to get a global case control card. And I will navigate down to the same options under the global case control. My temp initial gets my cure temp. And my temp load gets my defined temp load. And that will apply a temperature delta on this model. When you're applying a temperature delta, it's also important that you actually have thermal coefficients set on your material cards. And both of these provided materials, the one for carbon and the one for fiberglass, both have thermal coefficients specified. This video will review uh, composite specific result requests in OptiStruct including ply level or ply scale strains and stresses, laminate scale strains and stresses, and first ply failure criteria. If you're unsure, I suggest post-processing ply level strains over any sort of stress result. Uh, the reason for this 
is that unless we're using multi-scale materials, our models are homogenized at a ply scale at best. Uh, when we're looking at stress from something like a ply scale stress re request, we're getting some averaged value across both the constituent materials, so both the fiber and matrix. Uh, but these composites don't fail uh, because of some averaged stress value across constituent materials. They fail in one of the constituent materials. And so accordingly, if we're looking at the, the ply strains, and in particular in the one direction, or the fiber direction, this is the actual strain in the constituent fiber material, and it's carrying most of the load in general. Uh, so if we use a strain first ply failure criteria in the one direction, this is about as close to physics-based uh, as we're going to get at the ply scale. There are a lot of first ply failure criteria, but if you're unsure of what to use, I suggest a simple strain in the one direction. Uh, in addition, if we're going to be looking at strains, uh, it's important to look at mechanical strain over total strain. And the reason for this is that mechanical strain is the strain that causes stress. A simple example of that is to consider a, a metal bar subjected to some sort of temperature change. And on the left, it's constrained or fixed at the ends. And on the right, it's unconstrained. In the left example, there's no strain, no total strain or no displacement at the ends of the bar. So the total strain is zero. But there is strain within the bar uh, due to the thermal effects. And specifically, that works out into a mechanical strain. Because mechanical strain is equal to the total strain minus the thermal strain. In the unconstrained bar, we do have a total strain. But none of it's causing stress. And again, using our uh, equation for mechanical strain, the mechanical strain in this example works out to zero. So all is well in the world with this example as well. To actually make these result requests, we'll go into HyperMesh. And I will go into Create. And I want a Cards Output. This will give us a global out output request. Similar to the uh, thermal loads that we applied earlier, I can do this at a global level or a subcase specific level. It's exactly the same for the subcase by selecting it here and choosing your result requests under output. So I'll go ahead and just demo it with the global output request. First up, ply scale strains are available via the C strain option. And typically, we want to set the extra, again, to mechanical. And I usually use an end div of two, which means we'll get results on both the top and bottom of each ply. If you do want ply scale stresses, you can get them via C stress. And I'll go ahead and set an end div of two on the ply scale stress as well. <clears throat> Any uh, specified first ply failure criteria can be requested uh, under the C failure option right here. I'll go ahead and set an end div of two. And to actually look at what we're requesting for a first ply failure criteria, I can come down to my materials. And on the mat 9 or, we have a mat F, which allows us to specify a first ply failure criteria and the uh, the allowables for that criteria. So on both the carbon and glass epoxies, I'm using a simple strain first ply failure criteria. In general, if you're not sure what to use, for the previously discussed reasons, I suggest just a simple strain criteria. And alternatively, you can simply uh, post-process on the C strain apply scale uh, strain results and just apply your result or your allowables directly in um, in Hyperview. And I actually generally prefer looking uh, directly at ply scale strains versus using some sort of criteria because it's easier to isolate what the actual failure is. Is it a compressive or a tensile fiber direction strain, for example, or is it something else? 
For laminate scale results, we can come down to strain and stress. For strain, I'll go ahead and select the strain request and mechanical strains again. And for stress, I get it by default, but I can explicitly request it here as well. And with that, that completes all the composite specific shell, uh, ply scale and laminate scale result requests. This video covers solving the model in OptiStruct. There's nothing special here. I just need to come to the Analyze ribbon, select Analyze. I'll go ahead and put the FEM in a new folder just so I don't overwrite the existing data. I'll save it, export the FEM. You can input any uh, run options I need right here. Maybe something like four cores and I will run. And we have a uh, completed analysis here. This video will review post-processing of common composite results in Hyperview. So after the model has been run through OptiStruct, we can go ahead and invoke Hyperview in whatever way you prefer. I usually add a page right here. I already have one. And if you don't already, you can add it and then just make sure the client is set to Hyperview. To bring in data, I'll go to Open. For the model, I'm going to choose the .fem that I exported previously. I don't always have to do this, but in certain use cases, it is uh, helpful to have it instead of the result file because it contains all the uh, composite data. Uh, for example, material orientations are a big one that are only contained in the FEM and not the result file. So in general, if you don't have a reason not to, it's a good idea to get in a habit of bringing in the solver deck as the model file. And for the result file, I can go back into the uh, open file dialog here, or I can just change the extension to, in the case of OptiStruct output, an H3D. The other setting I'm going to make sure I have is the result math template. Make sure it's set to advanced. Uh, not all, but some use cases, uh, advanced is required to consume all the data in the result file so that it can properly be plotted and you may or may not get that with the standard option. Uh, it's done this way for performance reasons, but in general, I just leave the result math template set to advanced for any composites post-processing. Those set, I'll apply and bring the data in. Just going to add the mesh lines here. We'll begin by looking at ply level results can do this from the contour panel. And we'll start with strains. So I'll come down to my result type. I'll choose composite strains and I wanna make sure I'm grabbing the mechanical strains per the discussion in the previous video. For types, I'm going to start by grabbing my normal X strain. This is the one direction or fiber direction strain. I can also plot my two direction uh, listed in Hyperview is a normal Y right here. I'll grab normal X, so the fiber direction strains. And for my layer, we'll begin with max, but I do have an option to choose min uh, to plot the uh, name of the max or min layer or to look at any specific ply here. So we'll begin with max and apply. This is going to show me the max strain result of uh, each element. So it's going through the list of plies on each element and determining the max strain, and that's what's being contoured. I can plot the min as well here. And a couple other options. If I come down to max or min layer, I'll see the string uh, describing the ply, which has the max result on a given element. And again, if I come to layers, I can go to any specific ply. So for example, if I do carbon three, which is a partial shape, 
I see just the results for that ply. Very similar for ply scale stresses. I can come to composite stresses and all the same options here for stress in terms of layer filtering. For any first ply failure criteria I've requested, those will be under the composite failure with a description of the uh, failure criteria I selected. So I'll go ahead and grab composite failure and apply. And this time per the criteria, it'll show an index instead of uh, something like a strain result or a stress result. This is all described in the documentation for MAT F, uh, depending on the criteria you've selected. If we remember back to the setup or result request video, this is a max strain failure criteria. So that's what I'm seeing in the contour plot. Moving on to laminate level results, still in the contour uh, panel. If I come up to element strains or stresses, this is going to give me the, um, the laminate level results. So if I go to element strains, for example, choose a direction, same thing, I'll, I'll choose the appropriate layer. This is now just determining between um, a top or a bottom result. And resolved in, usually it's a good idea to just explicitly select the material system here so you know what you're getting. So those are strains in my XX direction resolved in the material system. Very similar for if I were going to look at laminate level stresses, just need to select a result type of element stresses instead. And that covers uh, simple post-processing of typical composite results in Hyperview.